Welcome back to Minnesota Matters. I'm Scott Peterson. You may have seen comedian Andy Kindler on the IFC series Marin or heard him as the voice of Mort on Bob's Burgers. Going back a bit, he appeared regularly on The Late Show with David Letterman and on Everybody Loves Raymond. Kindler's also been a successful stand-up comedian for several decades. He makes his way to Acme Comedy Club in Minneapolis this week. I recently spoke with Kindler about Minnesota audiences, working with Letterman, and more. I've heard a lot of comedians say that Minnesota is a great place for comedy. I'm wondering if you agree with that. And if you do, why, why is this a good place for comedy? Well, a lot of times it depends on the, the club in the town. And, you know, Acme Comedy Company, I've been going there since like the early 90s. And Louis Lee is one of very, you know, there's not, he's not the only person like this, but he's one of very few club owners who actually understands comedy I mean, there are club owners who understand comedy, but he really understands it and supports people he thinks are funny, even though they may not necessarily be crowd pleasers. So um, his club is an amazing club to play, and, and everybody, you know, for many people, it's, it's their favorite club in the country to play. In general, I think the other thing about uh, uh, Minneapolis is, you know, without it being a stereotype, I think people generally are pretty nice in, in, in Minnesota. And uh, so for me... I'm from New York. I'm an ex-New Yorker and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of times I would play New York, and I kind of don't do well with the tough crowd. Uh, well, that was the name of the show. But the tough, you know, the crowd saying, you know, make us laugh or, you know, put us down or let's have a con- uh, let's have a uh, adversarial relationship. I kind of do better. And with with crowd, it, it, very rarely in Minneapolis do people turn on you. They may not get everything you're saying. They may not like everything you're saying, but they give you space to say it. So that, that, I think that's just by definition makes it more fun. As somebody who's been doing stand-up comedy for, I think you've been doing it for over 30 years, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. Uh, have you developed a, 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 a sort of a thick skin to handle bad audiences or hecklers? Is that something you had right away? Well, the thing about stand-up comedy, I mean, I almost like feel like I'm preaching it as almost a, <laughs> in a sermon-like way. I've, I've, uh, just basing on my own career, I am amazed that I that if you had told me when I started that I wouldn't be making certain breakthroughs till 20 years in, I would I wouldn't have believed that. <laughs> uh, but the truth is, I feel like I'm a better comic now than I've ever been. And that doesn't mean that every night's going to be great, but it means that the technique that you need to become a stand-up comic is really just by doing it over and over and over. Is it really ever the audience's fault if it doesn't go well or if you bomb? Well, this is like an argument that uh, I've always had in my head. And uh, like Jerry Seinfeld, who I think is hilarious, and I love the show Seinfeld, but he would always say kooky things. You know, when they would talk, ask him about his philosophy. So one of the things he used to say was, it's always the comedian's fault. The audience is always right, and if you had a bad set, that's your fault. And he also would say things like, and I've even heard Chris Rock say things like, you know, a comedian should be able to perform well for every crowd. He's like, I don't believe any of that stuff. And, of course, I, I don't know if ironically is the right word, but recently, like a year ago, Seinfeld started to blame the crowd. The, the guy who never blamed crowds was like saying, oh, it's too PC now. Right. So, you know, he kind of like there's a po- hypocrisy going there. Uh, but I, don't, I do think that not every crowd, it's not so much about blaming the crowds, but it's also like not blaming yourself. The crowd's not wrong, but, you know, I've done jokes that have worked 50 times in a row and then it doesn't work at all. I, it can't be. It's not the joke. Now it could be something about my delivery that I'm not seeing, but I don't. I don't believe it's like a business where you say the customer is always right. I wanted to ask you about working on the Letterman show. I know a, a lot of comedians sort of look up to him and emulate him, and he's somebody I grew up watching. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about that experience. What was it like working on his show with him? Well, that was you know to me. I was. I'm old enough to obviously remember. Uh, to watch Johnny Carson. In fact, I'm enjoying watching Johnny Carson now. They they have the repeats on TV. Uh, but he, for my generation, you know, he really was the guy. And uh, so he was my hero, kind of my comedy hero. When that show came out, 
uh, you know, and when I was younger, it was like Woody Allen, uh, David Letterman, Richard Lewis. I love comedians who were self-deprecating and kind of made fun. To me, David Letterman was truly subversive because he wasn't trying to be subversive. He just was basically, he would do a comedy bit and he would just say, oh, this is hilarious. So me go, going in a show was like the dream of my life. And I went on in 96 and unlike... Roseanne's first time on the Tonight Show where she killed, I felt I did a very lackluster performance and I was kind of very upset about it. But the other part of it was I thought I was ready, but I don't think I was ready. And then four years later, I went on again. And one of my first lines was, I was here four years ago. I'm on now. I, I can't live on this kind of money. And then it just got to be where he, I could tell that each set I did, he started to like more and more. And I did this set in January of 2005 where the audience got me he got you know he was into it and then I started doing these field pieces so it really to me is if you would ask me going in what my dream would be I could, that would have been my dream to have been able I did like 30 field pieces I mean it just I couldn't have asked for more for that relationship and uh I just I mean I'm so proud of having done it and so thrilled that it happened to me I don't really need anything else to happen to me to top that, except I would like to make enough money to not uh, to pay my mortgage. What can folks who might be listening to this, what can they expect from, from your sets when you're in town for a few days in a row? Well, because it's so close to Montreal, I will be working on a lot of the stuff that I'll be talking about in Montreal. So, um, and hopefully that won't <laughs> alienate people. So I'll be doing that. And then I always have... I always have uh, – I've been doing this bit about – that I really like about I, – I can't explain it completely because it will tip it, but it's basically about how I was the first comedian who knows the difference between men and women. Before that, <laughs> comics were like, hey, men and women are similar, but I – so I do this whole thing of back me up, ladies. Am I right, guys? Back <laughs> me up, ladies. And, the, and crowds seem to get it too as well as comics. And uh, I, I, I will be putting down Bill Mar- Marv, which I've been doing for years. And the other thing I love about Minneapolis, well, I'll be visiting uh, my favorite uh, restaurants. I, I, I uh, already am salivating over Black Sheep Pizza. And right around the club, there's about eight restaurants that I love. So it's always, it's always like a vacation for me. But also stand-up is a vacation for me, <laughs> mostly. Well, we're looking forward to having you here, and I hope you enjoy your time while you're in Minneapolis. And I really do appreciate how generous you've been with your time with me today. Thank you so much for taking the opportunity to chat. I appreciate it. Thank you. This was really great. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks again for listening, and please tune in again next week for Minnesota Matters on this MNN station.